Attempting to find good, reliable information pertaining to ancient sites and discovered artifacts can be somewhat time-consuming. However, there are researchers dedicated to providing the facts, no matter the consequences. Ultimately, most of the time we find relevant and detailed information quickly being crushed or even removed from existence across the World Wide Web. One of the world's biggest mysteries, even now, involved the Great Pyramid of Giza. This monumental construction is still the topic of much debate, especially surrounding its origins. There are researchers that believe the pyramids predate the Egyptian culture and that the pyramids may have been adopted by the Egyptians. This theory is strengthened by the lack of evidence to support the idea that the Egyptians created them, especially when you learn that not a single Egyptian hieroglyph was ever found in the Great Pyramid, nor any existence to show that any pharaohs were buried within. For many scholars around the world, the magnificence of their construction still provides mystery and wonder. For example, the Great Pyramid is the only pyramid on our planet that has eight sides and not four. Each of the pyramid's four sides is precisely split from the apex to the base with very subtle concave indentations. It's believed that this discovery was made by a British Air Force pilot called P. Groves in 1940 as he flew over the Great Pyramid in his light aircraft. Groves reportedly noticed the strange sight and took a photograph showing shadows that reveal the indentations. Some believe these subtle lines are only visible from above and at specific times such as dusk and dawn on the spring and autumn equinoxes. This leads some conspiracy theorists to think that the ancient Egyptians built the pyramids too, perhaps communicate with heavenly beings from above. On the east side of the Cheops Pyramid, numerous outside blocks have been removed, revealing the huge, megalithic-type blocks underneath. These larger blocks would have gone unnoticed if the smaller blocks outside had not been removed. Even the visible outside blocks are of an impressive size, and in some cases provide shelter from the blistering heat of the day. It's estimated to comprise of some 2.5 million stone blocks, averaging 2.5 tons each, plus additional blocks weighing considerably more lying deep within the pyramid, where they serve special functions. How were all these huge stones moved? Even if we are to believe the textbooks and workers had somehow achieved the impossible and moved 10 blocks up on top of each other a day, the 2.5 million stone block construction would still have taken 664 years, meaning if constructed for a pharaoh, they would have never seen its completion. A ridiculous hypothesis. There are also a number of surface blocks that are identical to those seen in Cusco, Peru. They consist of unusual shaped nodules protruding from them. It's been suggested by researchers that the nodules may have been used to help move the stone blocks, However, archaeologists say that they would have had no known purpose in aiding the moving of the blocks. Whatever the reason for their construction, the pre-Inca and Egyptians must have considered the manufacture of these nodules of great importance. The stones of the Great Pyramid have been placed with organized precision. When examining the stones more closely, we can see that the precision cuts have been made as part of the overall construction. Today, many of the blocks are missing. However, the Great Pyramid would have had a number of further outside layers, as well as a limestone covering. This would have given it a white coloring. It's even speculated that the pyramid apex would have been a solid piece of gold, making it a tremendous sight across the Egyptian landscape. Thanks to the use of specialist radiography equipment that uses cosmic rays to detect cavities in massive structures, scientists have discovered a considerably large, previously unknown opening within the Great Pyramid. The mysterious cavity could represent a hidden room with a cross-section of that of the Grand Gallery, the major corridor running through the pyramid, and is at least a hundred feet long. As to what this room may hold is not yet known. Also, scientists believe that the shape of the pyramid focuses electromagnetic energy into the chambers, creating higher levels of energy. Research into ancient geopolymers has discovered through the use of chemical X-ray analysis that the casing stones of the Great Pyramid are synthetic in origin and that they have a lower density than any quarried stone. 
CAT scans of the stones show that there are hairs deeply embedded in the matrix of the stone. This is another clue that the pyramid blocks were cast using liquid stone. Interestingly, the report on the dating of these hairs was never released. Recent tests carried out at Sacsayhuaman in Peru provided some fascinating data that would suggest the huge stones may have been molded and scraped into shape. Legend speaks of a liquid derived from plants, which was known to the ancients to turn the stones soft. In fact, in 1983, a Catholic priest reported that he used the technique to achieve the stone softening. However, he was unable to figure out how to make the liquid stone hard again. While this theory is still considered speculative, there are marks on some of the stones at Sacsayhuaman that indicate that the stones were molded in some way. Unlike the scientific testing of these stones carried out at the Great Pyramid in Egypt, Peru authorities will not allow any official investigation to take place. Probably the oldest and mysterious pyramids in the world are those found in Caral, Peru, an amazing site that little is known about. Rarely are these pyramids visited. The sacred city of Caral was a large settlement in the Supe Valley, some 200 kilometers north of the Peru capital Lima, and a well-studied site of the Norte Chico civilization. Caral was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2009. The pyramids were not discovered until 1948 and are estimated to be around 5,000 years old. Now pillaged, they were covered in intricate carvings and again possessing precision-cut stones. Huge blocks of stone have also been cut and placed in burial mounds throughout Europe. Meishal is a Neolithic chambered cairn and passage grave located in the Orkney Islands. Like many other Neolithic chambers, the passageway is perfectly aligned with the midwinter solstice. Believed to have been built in 2800 BC, Meishal is the largest and most impressive of the chambered tombs found in Orkney and was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1999. The passage entrance to Meishau aligns perfectly with the morning sun of the midwinter solstice, allowing the sunlight to flood the chamber, revealing the true size of the huge blocks used. The construction within the center of the Neolithic chamber is magnificent. It is truly a work of art. Precision-cut stones have been carefully placed, even in the apex of the roof. No mortar is used, simply the stones are set in a way that they support one another. Neolithic chambers found in Newgrange in Ireland also align with the winter solstice and contain intriguing megalithic blocks, some of which must weigh hundreds of tons, which again reveal their magnificence during the winter solstice when sunlight floods the chamber. Huge walls found in Italy also show precision cut and placed stone blocks of stone. The Acropolis of Alatri is a good demonstration of an ancient fortress wall that houses the Acropolis. The center building has been precisely placed to align itself with the heavens. The masonry of Alatri is nearly identical to that of the famous polygonal walls of Greece and stands around 30 feet in height. The wall formed a defensive league against the Volsci and the Samnites around 550 BC. True polygonal masonry is a technique wherein the visible surfaces of the stone are dressed with straight sides or joints, giving the block the appearance of a polygon. Newer construction has been applied to the older walls, just as we see Cusco, Peru, whereas the ancient pre-Inca walls are much more superior and require no mortar to hold them together. The method of cutting huge blocks and placing them is an old age mystery that defies explanation in modern times. Apart from the ancient and incredible method of key locking stones together, we also find part of the blocks of stone vetrified, making important areas of the stone even stronger. This method can only be carried out by applying temperatures to the stone well beyond that of any traditional fire could create. Some of the ancient walls throughout Peru consist of small pieces of stone as parts of its construction. Similar precision cuts are also found throughout the Egyptian walls, suggesting the method of cutting stone must have been relatively easy. The famous palace walls of Japan have also been fashioned in the same way, and in some cases, even giant boulders have been precision cut into walls. 
Researchers and archaeologists are often stuck for words when it comes to complete buildings that have been cut out of the bedrock. These ancient temples have doorways, inner rooms and passages, all cut from as a single piece from the granite bedrock, some of which have long been abandoned. A lost history with so many unanswered questions. In some cases, whole cities have been carved out of the bedrock, leaving academics to wonder why and how these mysterious locations were created. Some buildings show exquisite carvings that have stood the test of time. Others have become popular tourist attractions, such as the Petra in Jordan, literally carved out of a mountainside that featured in an Indiana Jones movie. Though rather odd, numerous ancient sites around the world have amazing cut pieces of stone just scattered around on the ground, some of which are cut with so much precision that even now, thousands of years later, we have corners on them that are sharp. Mainstream archaeologists would have us believe all these constructions were created via the use of brass and copper tools, which in many cases are much softer than the rock they were used on. As an example, rose quartz crystal granite found in Egypt has a hardness level of 8 out of 10, and the tools to cut the stone only have a hardness of 3 out of 10. Something clearly does not add up. Apart from huge stones being cut, there is evidence of drill and bore holes, most of which show evidence of machine marks as if something had turned and cut through the stone. The pentagonal boreholes of Massachusetts have been referred to as star holes. They consist of numerous shapes and sizes, often cut into granite stone. Why these shapes were cut remain a mystery, including the method that was used. These relatively new discoveries have baffled archaeologists. However, others, more precisionally cut, have been found in other countries, such as the star holes of Norway, which clearly show evidence of machine marks. It's unknown as to why these unusual marks appear in stone, often many hundreds of miles away from ancient sites. Some of the star holes in Norway consist of numerous shapes, just like those discovered in Massachusetts in the US. On close examination, you can see that a boring machine must have been used. The inner ridges are consistent of machine marks that rotated and cut through the rock almost a millimeter per revolution. Science is yet to find an explanation as to how this was done. The only feasible explanation of how ancient civilizations managed to cut rock so proficiently is the theory that they somehow knew how to soften the rock and also how to move them. The scholars of the world continue to tell us that these great feats were carried out by the use of brass and copper tools, when clearly it seems the truth of the matter is a guarded secret.